Um, so one thing, uh, Rebecca, one new, yeah, yeah, take the uh, your pointer off when you change slides. So uh, this is this is uh, birds of Northern California. Um, this uh, picture I took on Oak Run Road on my way home one day. Um, they were lined up. I only shot four of the birds here. Took photo photograph of four of them, but there was a whole bunch of them in line there um, with that deer. Next. Oh, can you hear me, Rebecca? Yes, but I don't know if. Um, oh, you don't know how to advance the slides? Yeah, it's down at the bottom, right? Yeah. There you go. <clears throat> She's muted. That's okay. She's not going to be talking. <laughs> So um, obviously this is a turkey vulture, you know, the, the cleanup crew. We love these guys. Um, and we see lots of them all over. I believe uh, they have about a five and a half foot wingspan. And um, you can tell them from long, long way away just by the way they soar with the slight dihedral. Next, dark eyed junco. This is the female uh, with the gray head. And this is our, our uh, the, the, the version that we get pretty much most of the time is the Oregon Junko. That's the, the female has the gray head and the uh, next slide, the male has the black head. There's also a slate colored, which I have a photo of, but I didn't put it in there. Um, I updated this uh, slideshow a little bit, but there's still several images. These guys are easy to identify with the pink bill and the black head or the gray head for the female. Next, cedar waxwing. Um, we see them mostly in the fall and winter. Large flocks come through all the time. Actually, we just saw some uh, the last couple of days here at, uh, at um, Oh, at uh, Reading Island, yeah. Next slide, Golden Crown Sparrow. This was taken um, over in Plumas County, uh, but we get them here. They should start showing up pretty soon and we usually have them all through the winter. Next, White-throated white Sparrow. These used to be pretty rare and I guess they still are. I don't know how many of you this was the first one I had ever seen, and uh, Debbie Daly Anderson, the late Debbie Daly Anderson, let me come to her yard and photograph this bird when, when it was at her yard. But uh, I very rarely see them. We see them up in Fall River once in a while on our win on the Christmas bird counts, but maybe you guys see them awfully a lot more than I do. Next, American Robin. These guys are here year round, common bird. Next. I don't know if, if anybody knows why this acorn woodpecker has a blue iris, but uh, the reason is, is because it's a juvenile. It's a juvenile male. And uh, actually when they're really young, they, have, they start off with a brown eye and then they go, slightly, they slowly turn to blue and then they, then they turn to next slide, they turn to white when they get to be adults. This is the adult male. Next slide. And this is the adult female at, uh, at my woodpecker feeder, which they frequent often. Next slide. Female downy woodpecker. Notice the small beak and the, the buffy. Uh, Lores there, that's typical. Next slide. This is the male down, he's got the red on the back, which is fairly typical for a lot of woodpeckers. The male has the brighter colors. Next slide. This was taken at, uh, at Lassen Park, and I believe it's a uh, 
hairy woodpecker. It's got the larger beak. And this would be a male also with the red uh, nape. Next slide. And this is a female hairy. You can see how much larger the bill is than the, than the downy. Next slide. This is in my, this is from my yard. This is a juvenile um, nuttalls woodpecker. Uh, you can see the red on the, on the top of the head and juveniles, both the male and female nuttalls have red on the top of the head. And it's supposedly if the red extends beyond the um, eye in front of the eye, it's most likely a male, but you never can tell really. Next slide. This is the adult male nut owls, also at my woodpecker feeder, <clears throat> with the red nape, with the uh, red nape, or back of the red head, I guess I should say. Next slide. Well, you can see I love nut owls woodpeckers. This is another male. Next slide. This is the female, the female at the uh, nest. Uh, they were nesting in one of my oak trees. Next slide. And this is the uh, nestling. So you see this one has the red that's going uh, in front of the eye. So this is probably gonna end up being a male, not all. Next slide. Red-breasted sapsucker. Uh, we see them mostly in the fall and winter here. Um, they make those square and an oblong uh, sap holes, sap wells, which they have to tend to keep the sap running. So you, once, once you find the sap wells and you, you find the sap sucker there, you can kind of hang around until they show up uh, and take photos of them. Next. Male Anna's hummingbird, very common here, uh, year round actually. I, I'm assuming most of you get them year round, as long as you keep feeders up. Next, this is the female Anna's. It's got the red, the red uh, throat. Uh, this is a female collecting nesting material that I hang off of my back porch, which I believe is made up of 100% uh, cotton. That's what it is. Next, Rufus hummingbird. Um, folks over on the coast probably get um, more Allen's hummingbirds, but they're really impossible to discern one from the other unless you see. Oh, you, oh, you also get to see the uh, the female Rufus hummingbird's tongue there on the sunflower seed. Next, so and this is the male Rufus, and this you can tell for sure that it's a Rufus and not an Allen's because the way you tell is that notched R5 on the tail there that you can see clearly on this guy. So if you were in a location where they had Allen's and Rufus hummingbirds, um, and you see that notch on the tail, then you know that that's a, a Rufus. Next. This is a female Costa's hummingbird. Uh, you can see the underneath the wings, it's got the uh, tan beige color flanks there. And then the, the pattern on the chin also uh, makes, shows that to be a uh, Costas. Next, the male's Costas is obvious. It's got the spread um, uh, throat feathers there, the gorget. And you, see, you can see it also has the tan flanks also. And they're pretty rare here, but they come through, you know, every few years I've gotten them several years. Next. This is uh, a shot of the male's costa that, <laughs> that was in our garden and my wife saw it come down and what what's happening was it was um, displaying to the male, to the female that was down in the garden and it came zooming down there and, and they moved back and forth horizontally in front of the female and kind of danced in front of them. And I ran in the house and got my camera and and he was still acting up, and so I got uh, at least one good photo. Next. This uh, basically shows the size difference between these two. It's a male Costa's hummingbird and a, a, a male Anna's in the background. And of course, 
from perspective, you would know that the bird in front would be much larger than the one in the back. But so taking that into account, you see how much smaller the cost is in the, in the, than the uh, annas. Next. Uh, I can't remember what month I took this. Obviously, it was the winter here in, uh, in Oak Run, but uh, lesser goldfinches and uh, house finches mainly. I just kind of like the colors in that one. Next. This is a female American goldfinch. You can tell the American from the lessers by the color of the beak. Because American goldfinches have that orange beak and they are sometimes difficult to differentiate, but that's one way you can tell them apart. Next, this is the male American. The broad white stripes are different than the lesser goldfinches plus, you know, the, the orange beak. Next, this is just a photograph of my, my backyard pond and waterfall. We've got a lot of birds come to that, so it's kind of nice. I have set up a blind there so I can sit there inside the blind and take get some good photographs close up. Next. So here's a, this is a good um, comparison between the lessers and the Americans and see how much larger the American goldfinches are. And those, those three American goldfinches on the right there are actually uh, in their, they're changing uh, seasons. They're, they're not in full um, plumage. Next, male and female lesser goldfinches. You can see they have like a grayish, a darker bill than the American. Next. This is a, the female lesser goldfinch uh, feeding chicks in a nest. I found this nest because uh, I was monitoring bluebird nest boxes and um, this lesser goldfinches kept buzzing in and out. And I finally looked up and I found that there was a nest up there. And, so I hung out and took some photos of her feeding the young. That was pretty fun. Next. So a lot of people have trouble differentiating house finches from purple finches from um, from the Cassin's finch. Uh, the, these house finches, you can see the the female is pretty. The head, the face is pretty plain. It's got really wide, um, blurry kind of lines on the breast. The male uh, has, uh, and they're not, the brightness really has nothing to do with it. And there's a lot, there's total, lots of differentiations between, especially on the male and the coloring, but they all have this uh, spot on the auriculars underneath the eye there where there's usually no red, it's usually gray or lighter color. Next. So this is the female purple finch. Um, and the main difference you can see here is the white line over the eye. And they also have kind of blurry um, lines down the breast. Next. The male purple finch, notice it doesn't have any of those um, lines down its belly and flanks. It's just kind of purple all over, even on the back. If you saw the back of it and the tail, uh, there's a lot of purple on it and uh, none of the brown stripes on the belly. So that's how you can differentiate that from the house finch. Next, this is a pair of Cassin's finches. And we had some Cassin's finches here in town um, this last spring. And there was a big, um, people were commenting on, you know, how can we tell the difference and all that stuff. So that's one of the reasons I wanted to show these is the Cassin's finch, which is fairly rare for being here. It's usually, it's a high elevation bird, um, but you can see the Cassin's finch has a, a much brighter crown than the rest of the red on them. And the female Cassin's has those really narrow defined um, stripes on the breast. And it also has a, you can't see very well in this photo, but uh, the female has a white eye ring. Next. 
Pinesiskin. These guys are eruptive. They have years where you'll have tons of them in your yard if you're a bird feeder. And some years, many years, you won't have any. This last year, um, the uh, there was a, a what was a boss, not a bostulism. There was a um, a disease going through the the bird feeders that they figured was brought in by the pine siskins, and um, so most of us uh, took our feeders down for a few weeks because uh, there were just the birds were just dying from the. Does anybody remember what the, the name of that uh, disease that was going through there? Thamidellosis. Well, what is it? Thamidellosis. Ah, okay. It's a bacteria. Yeah, yeah. I had, you know, I didn't, I had several birds killed in my yard um, before I actually realized what was going on. Next. Stellar's J. They're year round uh, in some places like higher elevations, Lassen Park and stuff. But I had this, uh, this one visited me for uh, a whole winter. Um, and you notice, I know most people notice or uh, realize this or not, but one way you can tell an immature bird is the gape at the corner of the beak there. You can see it's light colored on this uh, Stellar J. That means it's not a uh, adult bird yet. Next, California scrub jay. Um, we have tons of these. Most people have these everywhere. They're rowdy and and uh, a beautiful bird. Actually, they can wreak havoc, but I like them. Next, this is a, a male adult black-headed grosbeak. Um, they usually come through my place in spring and summer. They come through, I think, usually early May. Um, and I think they, I don't know if they actually nest near me or if they go a little higher up in elevation. But uh, sure enough, like a month or a month and a half later, they come back to, the, uh, to my property uh, with their kids and uh, devour bird seed, subflower seeds from the feeder. Next. This is the female, female black-headed grosbeak. You can see why they call it grosbeak. Next. This is an adult male evening grosbeak. I guess they're for pretty rare coming through, but they, when they do come through, they will come through in large flocks. Um, and I noticed that uh, this is their breeding plumage. They have a green, their, their beak turns from light, like a light colored, almost white to this greener color, which I think is, uh, is really cool. So that's the male next. This is the female. Pretty on her, at her own right. Next. This is a bush tit. And we can tell a male from a female bush tit. Does anybody know how we can tell that? This is a male bush tit. It's got a black iris. And they, mm -hmm. uh, they, they flock in <coughs> large numbers. Um, uh, next, next slide. It's the female. Female has a, a yellow iris. We saw lots of them the other day, Tim and I. I think we saw a lot of them today, too. Next. Black Phoebe. They're here year round. Uh, <laughs> they, they, uh, the last couple of uh, outings that I've had uh, going out with Tim, there, there are so many Black Phoebes that they distract you from finding the other um, the other birds that are the migrating birds that are passing through the warblers and stuff, the, uh, we always seem to catch our eyes on the black phoebes, but they're a beautiful bird. Next, red breasted nuthatch. Um, they visit my yard and stay all winter every, I don't know, five or six years or so. They come through down here, and I guess they 
Um, I don't know what, if it has to do with the feeding up the higher elevations or what the uh, reason is, but they'll come down and into the into 1,600 feet is my elevation, and uh, so I get to see them occasionally. Next, yellow warbler. We've been seeing a lot of these in the last week or so. Um, they uh, they come through spring and fall when they migrate north and south. Uh, they're coming through right now, so uh, this is a good time to get out um, and go to any of the places that are especially uh, in tree lined. Tree -lined. Yeah, tree lined. Like, go ahead, uh, Larry. Yeah, I was just gonna say. One thing I learned on these guys, because these fall warblers can be really hard to, to distinguish, but um, look at, there's a kind of a yellow eye ring on these guys. And that really helps on, helps me anyway, on identifying uh, the, the yellow warblers, especially in the fall when you can get little young ones that don't, aren't very bright and all that good stuff. Yeah, and you can also get orange crown warblers that look a lot like yellow warblers, but they don't have the yellow eye ring. Yes. Next. Nashville warbler. So all these warblers are coming through right now. These are ones that I photographed. Actually, this is a uh, silver dollar eucalyptus that I have growing behind my pond. Um, but these were all taken right at my ponds as they come through uh, during migration. Oh yeah, so Nashville warbler, gray head, white eye ring, yellow breast. Next, warbling vireo. Um, these are easy to identify with that broad uh, eye, white eyebrow and then white underneath the eye and with the gray cap. And, and I just noticed that they have blue feet. That's pretty cool. <laughs> Next. Now this, some people might think that this is a ruby crown kinglet, but actually this is a Hutton's Vario. And the way you can dis distinguish it from a uh, red crown is it, this eye ring, the white eye ring is broken on the top, whereas the ruby crown kinglet has a full eye ring, and then the Hutton's Vario also has a hook on the upper beak. And you can't see it in this photo, but they have a, a white bar on the wing and the, uh, the ruby crown kinglet has a black bar behind the white bar. And that's it. Well, I'll actually go to the next slide because the next slide is actually a ruby crown kinglet. And you see that black stripe behind the white one and then the, uh, the eye ring is not, doesn't go around the bottom either. And the, the other thing about the ruby crown kinglet, if you see them, they have orange feet. Next. This is uh, a, a little tete-a-tete -tete between a, a ruby crown kinglet and a male lesser goldfinch. The ruby crown was taking a bath and the, the goldfinch just kind of came in and started harassing him, but uh, he, he stayed and finished anyway. Next. <laughs> Next slide. Is it not moving? Ah, there it is. Uh, Ruby crown, this is the Ruby crown kinglet, obviously. It's got the black bar behind the white bar. It's got a pointed beak. And this one's actually showing its crown, which in the springtime um, when they're mating and stuff, they, and I haven't got a photograph of it yet, but they really show a crown. They can have a crown that's standing up like a, like a Stellar's J actually. Next. Well. <clears throat> this golden crown kinglet. This is not a very good photograph, but it's the only photograph I have of a golden crown kinglet because I really never see them. Uh, this was in my yard, actually. Um, the only other place I've seen them is up in Lassen Park. Dan, you probably know where there's more golden crown kinglets, but uh... yeah, they're up in the trees. <laughs> um, <laughs> the the thing the thing that I'd say 
is uh, yeah, if you're up in the conifers and you you catch. Uh, Uh oh, we lost Dan's audio. <clears throat> but yeah, so they're up in the higher elevations, like I said, in the pines. And that's really cute. When you get the males in the middle of that yellow crown, they have this bright orange color, and it's it's just incredible that much brilliant little color in just that little teeny teeny tiny package. Yeah, I've never I've actually never seen that. Ah, something to look forward to. Yeah, next slide. Uh, Bewix wren, these are pretty common um, most places. We saw some today uh, at, uh, at the wastewater treatment plant. White uh, stripe over the eye and the striped tail usually sticking up in the air. Next. Um, one of my cavity nesting birds, oak titmouse. These are the first nesters up here. They start usually in uh, March or early April. Um, this one's getting ready to take some food to his chicks in the nest box. Next. And these are baby oak titmice. Titmice, titmouses. These are uh, the nestlings. Yeah, they do, they put a lot of fur in their nest. They have a nice fur cup for them. Of course, if you're if you're nesting in February, it's probably a good idea. Next, white breasted nuthatch. Obviously, these are very common and and uh, loud, so that you know when they're there. Next, this is the white breasted nuthatch chicks in the nest. They even have even more fur than the uh, than the oak tit mouse. Then they produce more offspring. Usually, I think they have six, is their common number of offspring. Next, asteroid flycatcher. They're the last ones to nest in the nest boxes here. They usually come in after the western bluebirds um, in June or July. This one's uh, in the process of building its nest. Next. These are probably day old or actually just hatched uh, asteroid flycatchers. And most their nesting is mostly hair. They use a lot of hair um, in their nests. Next. These are ash throated, probably at five, six days old. Their eyes are just opening. Next. Um, Bullock's Oriole, this, this is the male, uh, photographed at town, the town, Tim, what is the name of that, uh, it's the uh, townhouse, out where we have our picnics, that's oh. right, what's that? The car house. No, it's not the car powerhouse. It's, I think, the one past that. It's the town. I know it's got the bridge, it's got a bridge that goes over to an old white um, farmhouse. Yeah. yeah. Next. This is the female Bullock's Oreo with the, with the chick's head sticking out of the nest on the right side there. Next. Hermit thrush, I only get these in the winter. I guess they come in in the fall sometimes, fall and winter. Next. Male and female California quail. Um, I have lots of them around now. Like right now they are starting to um, make coveys, starting to get a lot of them in groups. Next. These are their chicks, California quail babies. They grow pretty fast. Um, it looks like Mary, can you admit Mary into the, oh, maybe you can't, maybe I can't. I, I got it, I got it. Oh, hey. <laughs> uh, Rebecca? 
I was trying to admit Mary and the screen. I, yeah, I got, I, I admitted her. I guess you got to go way back to, we need to go to slide 73. If you can see that, eh, stop, oh, stop, there. stop. Go. Couple more, quail. Oh, quail. All right, next one. Turkey pult. These, these I photographed at my pond. Next. This is the, the hen turkey. She's just a few feet away from the pults there that were getting water from the pond. That's when I used to have a lawn, huh? Next. And the Tom Turkey, this was taken at Reading Memorial Park there right off of Highway 44 when you come into Reading. Um, I don't know if that guy's always there, but he seems to be in the winter time anyway. Next. This is the uh, non-native Eurasian collared dove that seemed to be taking over all over the place. Um, I started with two, now I have I think 22 in my yard. Um, and next, the morning dove, which is uh, native and I think much more beautiful than the Eurasian collar dove. They seem to be coming back now to my yard, but for a while they stayed away with the collar doves there. Next, spotted toey. These are easy to identify with the, this is a male, the female usually has a lighter, kind of like the, um, Dark eyed juncos. The male, the female usually has a lighter head, and the male has a black head. So this this would be a male. Next, California toey with the rust under the tail and the rust around the eye. Usually travel in pairs. I just found this out recently. George Horn said, "Yeah, when you see one, you see two. And sure enough, I discovered wherever I find these guys, there's always two of them at least. Next. This one is sometimes hard to identify for people, probably because we rarely see it. Uh, but this is a female lazuli bunting. Uh, they, and they do nest here. Uh, and then they're, then they're gone in the, in the fall and winter. Next. The male lazuli bunting. Next slide. So I kind of have these grouped by, you know, where I have photographed them for the most part. These were from Lima Ranch. Next slide. I don't know if you can see it right away, but this was one of the first, uh, probably I took in 2008, one of the first times I went on bird walks with uh, went to Audubon and I had never seen a Canada goose in a tree. Um, and so I took this photograph because I thought it was weird. But uh, I guess it's not really weird because I've, I've seen a lot of Canada geese and trees since then. Next, Lark Sparrow. This is one of my favorite sparrows just because it's so distinct. And, um, and I actually get them up here in Oak Run in the spring, but they're a beautiful bird. Next. This was uh, in one of the ponds at Lima Ranch there as a female wood duck uh, that was uh, hawking uh, damselflies. If you see all those little blue flies up above uh, the duck, she was uh, capturing those and uh, eating them like crazy. Next slide. Um, not seen too often these days, um, but whenever I look through uh, a flock of Canada geese, I always check to see if there's any cackling geese, which I think are way more common down in the uh, Bay Area. I think they nest down there on some island or something. But uh, this is a cackling goose on the front left. You can see uh, the size difference of them and what uh, they have a much tinier beak. Next, the very famous mallard. This is a mallard pair, male and female. They're Look like they're nesting there next to uh, Leah's pond and Lima Ranch. Next, canvas back. Um, 
these aren't seen very often because they're pretty much only here in the winter, um, but you can spot them right away by the red head with the red eye and the almost all kind of gray white back. Next. This is a male, uh, it's a ring neck drake. And you know, a lot of people say, why do they call it a ring neck duck? You know, why don't they call it a ring billed duck? But next slide. It's, it's, uh, sometimes it's very obvious. You can, if you get the light just right, uh, you can see the ring around their neck. Also, it was named as a ring neck duck back in the day when they used to shoot the bird and then they had it in their hand and then they could uh, inspect it more closely, and that's when they saw the ring neck. Next slide. This is the female ring neck duck. Beautiful in its own right. I think a lot of the female ducks are just as beautiful as the males. They're just more subtle. Next slide. This is a pie billed grebe that was nesting uh, on the pond at uh, Lima Ranch. Uh, I went, kept going back day after day after day after day, waiting for him to hatch. And then one day when I thought it would be hatch day, I went and the nest had been uh, destroyed by a, uh, uh, a, uh, not a muskrat, but an otter, not an otter. The other mammal that, that runs through the waters in those places. Next slide. Great egret. Of course, these are common birds almost anywhere where there's water year round. They don't have beavers over there, do they? No, it's they uh, otter. I don't think it's an otter either. What is the? A scrap? No. I guess it is a. I guess it is an otter. Okay. Yeah, Larry, I've seen uh, I've seen otters at Lima Ranch. Right. Okay. Yeah, that's uh, that's what got the uh, the grebe uh, nest. Unfortunately, I was really looking forward to seeing those baby grebes. Um, next slide. Uh, a not very good photograph of a red-shouldered hawk. Um, you'll see some better photos of those later from Sacramento National Wildlife Refuge. But it's uh, easily to tell uh, in flight because they're, they're all striped underneath. They have the, the wings are striped, the tail striped, and they got the red belly if they're an adult. Next slide. Virginia rail. Um, I was lucky enough one year uh, when there was a lot of rails at Lima Ranch and my friend Debbie, you know, I was, I was, trying to photograph Sora and um, so she said just go sit down there by the ponds by Mule Pond on Lima Ranch where they had the tall grasses and stuff and she said you know you'll you'll eventually she'll eventually come out because they're nesting in there next slide and sure enough she said go there at three o'clock and sit down next to this certain spot there by Mule Pond and she'll come out and she came out and I took photos that was one of my favorite photography trips. Next slide. Long-billed Dowett, sure. Uh, this was in the same year at the same pond. Um, they were all in there. So I just laid down on the grass there and started taking photographs. But Wilson snipe? Yeah, it is a Wilson snipe, right? That's yeah. why I said Longville. I, 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 I know. Long I heard your voice kind of wondering, wait, have I got that? <laughs> yeah, and I'm going, hey, that's not a Longville Dowager. That's stripes yeah. on it. Yeah, I need to change that. I need to change that. Ne next slide. Common Gallinule. There used to be quite a few of these at uh, Lima Ranch, but they seem to be few and far between now. Um, this one was in the slough between the two ponds there, between the big pond and the and Leah's Pond, I think it is. But they have been coming back. I've seen some in other places also. Next slide. So I have a series of slides here that you might notice are a little different. 
So you see this is a red shafted flicker, but it's got a red mustache where normally a northern flicker here would have a black mustache, a male, and it also had a res, has a red crest on the back of its neck, like a yellow shafted flicker would be. Next slide. There's the uh, red nape. Next slide. So this is an intergrade. This is, uh, I believe, a uh, between a, a yellow shafted and red shafted flicker, which they usually occur where the two uh, species cross in the mountains uh, between here and the Midwest. Next slide. Western kingbird. Uh, you can spot by the white outer tail feathers, yellow belly. Um, just while I think about this, uh, we went to, uh, right now there is an Eastern kingbird at the uh, Reading West, uh, at the Reading Wastewater Treatment Plant. Um, it's been there for at least three days. Uh, Tim Kashuba and I saw it today. He took some good pictures of it. Uh, I did not, <laughs> but um, it's still there. Uh, right on the Sacramento River. The last time one was seen in Redding area, I think was 2013. So they're few and far between Eastern Kingbird. These Western Kingbirds we see every year, spring and summer. Next slide. American Crow, see a lot of these in Redding and not so many uh, up in where I live in Oak Run, they're all ravens. Uh, I guess Redding gets both ravens and American crows. Next slide. This is a shot I took uh, from a tree swallow's nest box while I was monitoring the box. Uh, tree swallows have a tendency to dive bomb um, people that are interrupting their nest box activity. So I hung around for a while and took several photographs trying to get a shot of this high speed swallow. Next, it's the violet green swallow. They were nesting um, on my own property on the nest box. And so very easy to get uh, good um, bird shots uh, when they're nesting because they have to keep coming back to feed the young and they usually land on a perch and then they go to the nest box and then they take off and go get another insect and come back. So uh, this is a male violet green swallow. Next. These are violet green swallow chicks that I found at uh, Palisadro Community Park um, in, a, in a natural cavity there in an oak tree, which is oak tree unfortunately is no longer there because um, it got taken down in the last big snowstorm. But you can tell the juvenile, uh, the nestlings um, because of the gape again, as they grow older and older, that white gape under the eye there disappears into a, turns into a real beak. Next slide. Male Western Bluebird uh, top of the box. They spend a lot of time, uh, tech, like most birds do, they take a long time checking out nest boxes when there's more than one and nesting cavities when there's natural cavities, trees, until they find the one, until the female finds the one that she likes and that's the one that they use. Next. Another shot of a male Western bluebird taking off. Next. This is my favorite shot of a female Western bluebird. And I think their subtle blues and the turquoise and all these really nice subtle colors, uh, I, I think they're more pretty than the, than the males. Next slide. These are the Western Bluebird nestlings. They, they make their nest basically out of straw. So these are, uh, these are probably a day old. Next. These uh, Western Bluebirds are just getting their feathers. So they're probably about eight or nine years old, nine years, eight or nine days old. Um, and they will soon fledge in about another 10 days. Next, 
then they turn into these really cute little bluebird fledglings waiting for dad to bring him some food. That was at uh, Palisadro Community Park also. Next slide. Northern Mockingbird. This guy is, uh, this is displaying. Uh, he, he, was, he was the only one there picking up. I don't know if it's a male or female. I don't know why I keep saying he, but this bird was picking up nesting material and displaying, but there was no, no other birds around for him, him or her to display at, but I thought that was a, a good, good photo <laughs> to take. Next slide. Yellow rumped warbler. Um, looks like, I don't know if this is the beginning of the season or this is a female. Uh, the, it's getting its yellow throat right now. So it would be an Audubon since the uh, Myrtles has a white throat. Next slide. And the male yellow rumped warbler, much brighter, especially in peak season with the yellow rump, yellow throat and yellow cap. Next slide. Another one of my favorite sparrows, the chipping sparrow. They don't seem to be around long, but um, I usually see them in the spring and fall. And uh, I just like the contrast of the black and white and that rusty cap, They're easy to identify. Next slide. The white crown sparrow, orange beak, Black and white striped head. Next, next slide. This is about the only photo I have of a Merlin, but uh, they seem, it seems to me that they are becoming more and more common, especially um, in here in Chasta County. I seem to see them more often. Next slide. Um, this is a very rare bird, bird for here. This is this was taken last, uh, I think it was last summer. It's a yellow-bellied sapsucker uh, that was at Lima Ranch. Um, a lot of people got to go see it. And you can see it's got really active uh, sap wells here. You can see the glistening of the sun off the sap wells. They have, to, they have to keep those constantly open, otherwise they close up like those lower ones are dried out there. But um, it was nice, I forget who originally saw it, but it's nice when people um, post those things so that we all get to go see the rare birds that come in. Next slide. Clover Creek Preserve. I haven't been there in quite a while, but um, I don't know if they have any water now. Does anybody know? Next slide. Now I have this down as a Western sandpiper. And I think that's what it is. I can't see that complete beak. Um, but I, they are difficult. I have difficulty with sandpipers. I don't know about you guys. We saw some leased sandpipers today at the uh, wastewater treatment plant that sure look a lot like this guy. Next slide. This is a pectoral sandpiper, uh, which is really rare here. Um, but there is one currently at Clear Creek Wastewater Treatment Plant uh, because we saw it and I took photographs of it today. This was taken on Lone Tree Pine uh, Pond across the road from the pond several years ago. Next slide. Greater yellow legs. They're pretty common wherever there's marsh, marshy areas. Next slide. Um, this is a female great-tailed grackle that are becoming more and more common here. You actually you can find grackles in parking, in like Safeway parking lot. I've seen them now at Costco parking lot. Yeah, so they're, uh, they're pretty common now. Next slide. And this is the male. Got a much longer tail and the yellow eye. Next slide. And they're they're pretty ruckus and they have pretty loud calls. This is the male calling at Clover Creek. Next slide. This is what some people, I guess, call the the uh, 
dreaded European starling, but um, they sure are beautiful when they're in full, full uh, plumage. This one was uh, at uh, Clover Creek also. Next slide. Turtle Bay. They have the, they have, Turtle Bay is a great place to go birding because you got the Sacramento River there. Um, they've got good trails all over. Um, you can see a lot of uh, different species because of, of the different habitats there. Next slide. This is a shot of, um, I think this is Liberty. Liberty had the white uh, going down a little bit further on the throat than the, than the male. Uh, but this, there's, this was in their nest there with the, with the nestling there underneath. Next slide. I got a couple slides here of uh, turkey vultures with their, this is the um, extended spread wing display that they use in the morning when they warm up. They have two basic displays to warm up in the morning. This one's the um, extended spread wing where they put their back toward the sun and, the, and they get warmed up so they can uh, get out and start flying. Next slide. The other, um, the other, uh, display is the uh, delted wing posture. You can see they got their wings sprawled out. And so with this one, they uh, this is the one they use if they're facing the sun. Um, you see these a lot in, early in the morning, especially when the sun comes up and they're trying to warm up. Next slide. Probably my favorite duck. I don't know. I really like buffalo heads. For one, one reason is they're a cavity nesting bird. And um, I've seen them in the in the nests at uh, up at Lassen Park. This is the female. Next slide. And if you get the male, if you get the light right, if you get the sunlight just right, the male buffalo head instead of looking black and white looks like this with the rainbow colors iridescent on the head. Next slide. Uh, this is the hooded merganser drake. Um, not a not a real common bird, but you know, you see them most of the time in the in the spring and fall and the winter. Next, a female hooded merganser with the cool, cool hairdo. <coughs> Beautiful. And the male, the male looks like that one. His crown is up too, except he's got the black and white. So the female has a I didn't get one of the male with the crown up. Next slide. Common merganser. These guys are everywhere in the Sacramento River, most, uh, most big rivers, fast moving rivers. They dive for uh, fish and stuff. Uh, and they, they usually go upstream and then they fly back down and go upstream again. Next slide. This is the Drake, common merganser. In breeding plumage. Next slide. Is the head study of a Canada goose? Because uh, if you're uh, Turtle Bay or Lima Ranch or anywhere, there's a lot of people you can get pretty close to a Canada goose. You want to be careful though if they have young. Next slide. Female mallard head study. This guy was right below the Turtle Bay, right below the bridge, the Sundial Bridge. In the, in the shallows there. Next slide. High-billed grebe in non-breeding plumage. This guy was uh, right there off of the freeway off of 44 where the walk is there, where the ponds are. Next slide. Green heron hiding in the, uh, alongside the side of the Creek, well, like they usually do, waiting for something to go by they can snatch. They're pretty good at hiding. So they blend right into their habitat. Next slide. Black crowned night heron is in breeding plumage. You can see that white plume well, coming off the back of his head. This was um, this was taken actually. Actually, I think this was taken on the road there between. Um, uh, between Turtle Bay and the, uh, the pond there, south of there off of the, the park. Next slide. 
which is also where the ring ringbill gull was taken. The place, the lots of ball, gulls there. You can you can uh, get good shots of gulls coming. People come and feed them there, so they are used to people, and they'll come in real close. Next, I was told that this is a, my my gull um, identification is almost non-existent, but I was told that this is a glaucus wing gull that are fairly rare here inland. If anybody can dispute that, feel free to do so. <laughs> Next slide. Um, this is a female belted kingfisher. It's got the red belt around it. It's the, one of the few um, species where the female is more um, brightly colored than the male. Next slide. This is the male belted kingfisher. Next slide. Another American crow, I just took a shot of that. It was, a, it was hanging out in the parking lot, Turtle Bay, before we took a walk. And I, I really, really see the American crow, so I took a picture of it. Next shot. Cliff swallow. Uh, we see them in the spring and summer as they nest here. They, they were, they did have big nests uh, underneath the, at the monolith there at Turtle Bay, but they all got taken over by um, house sparrows now. So now they're all nesting underneath the bridge. So when you go to Turtle Bay uh, during nesting season, there's just hundreds and hundreds of cliff swallows uh, around the bridge. Next. This is when they were nesting under at the, uh, at the concrete monolith there. They build the mud, mud nests. Next slide. This is one of my favorite um, asteroid fly catchers, one of my favorite cavity nesting birds. Unfortunately, it's got a praying mantis, but you know, it's feeding its young. That was at Turtle Bay also. Next slide. Uh, okay, I'm gonna go out and see the birds in Millville Plains. Next slide. Uh, young turkey. I don't know if this is a male or female, but I think that's a female. Next slide. Osprey. Um, this osprey is nesting on the on the bridge. Um, I forget the name of the bridge out there going to Red Bluff, but uh, it's not there anymore. I believe they're redoing that entire bridge and I haven't been there since, but that's where I took this photo. Uh, next slide. This was on Ash Creek. Um, there, there are several um, osprey nests around that, that whole Ash Creek and then out uh, up going down to Red Bluff uh, over that bridge. <clears throat> Lots of... Uh, Osprey nests, they're not all obviously occupied, but this is the adult with the yellow eyes and the two uh, looks close to being fledglings with the orange eyes. She's shading them because shading them with her wings because it was over 100 degrees that day. That's why they're all panting. Next slide. Juvenile red tail hawk um, identified by the striped tail. Uh, belly band makes it a red tail and also the dark Patagel band uh, in the front of the wings. Next slide. The adult uh, with the full red tail. Next slide. This is a ferruginous hawk. Uh, we get them in the winter, almost every winter, um, certainly in Fall River, but um, I also get them here uh, on Oak Run Road. Uh, they, their primary food is rabbit. So out here uh, in the oaks where there's oak and savanna, there's a lot of rabbits. So that's probably why they come every year. Next slide. This is another ferruginous hawk. This is in, this one's actually in, it was in Fall River. Next slide. Another ferruginous hawk. This is the dark morph. Um, and one of the telltale uh, uh, ways to identify a ferruginous hawk is the long gape. You see that the, how long the gape is, it extends underneath the eye. Uh, that's one way to tell a ferruginous from another hawk. 
like a, so that's the dark more. Next slide. American kestrel female. And next slide is the male with the gray wing and the gold on the back of the neck. And next slide this is another male that was in Fall River uh, in the winter time because they're here year round. They know they're also cavity nesting birds. Next slide. Horned lark. Uh, they're usually out. They're usually out in the grassland and hang out on roads and several places you can see them. Um, and they are here year round. Next slide. This was taken out on Millville Plains on the uh, up on the top of the grasslands where we go up to see all the wildflowers and stuff. There was a get dead cow out there. Um, there were several eagles, um, several ravens, and several turkey vultures working on that poor cow. And there, whenever the eagles would fly in, the rest of them would scatter around and go to the uh, other ends of the of the beast. Next slide. This is a prairie falcon. They're here year round, but they're, they seem to be um, seldom seen. I don't know about how many uh, you guys see, but they're easily identifiable by the, uh, uh, the markings on the head and the um, spots on the belly. Next slide. Another shot of the same prairie falcon. Next slide. Rough-legged hawk. This is a light colored one. Uh, this was up at Fall River. Uh, Christmas bird count, actually. Uh, that's the light morph. Next slide. This is the dark morph rough-legged hawk. They got the small beak and we only see them in winter here. Next slide. Great horned owl. Um, this owl was nesting in a huge oak tree um, in Palisadro right next to the school. Next slide. There she is with her, one of her nestlings there. Next slide. I don't know if most people can identify this bird, but um, we don't see them very often. I see them all the time here on Oak Run Road. These are Lewis's woodpeckers. And at certain times of year, you can see a lot of them in one place. Next slide. This is uh, the Lewis's woodpecker in flight. Red head, red belly. And they, they usually um, are on the tops of trees and they'll sally out to catch insects and fly around and go back to the same location and do it over and over while they're feeding. Next slide. They also hang out on telephone poles. Next slide. They're beautiful birds. The iridescence shines off of there. They look black some, most of the time, but you get them in light and they turn colors. Next slide. Says Phoebe. Um, there's a lot of these Says Phoebe out on Millville Plains for whatever reason, I guess because of the grasslands there, but um, spring, fall, and winter, uh, you, that's a good place to find them. Beautiful birds. Next slide. Mountain bluebirds. These were also, um, I photographed these also in Millville Plains, but they're usually up in the higher mountains. And I don't remember what year, if it was a year that there was a lot of snow or what, but this pair was down on Millville Plains Road male on the left, a female on the right. Next slide. On the Ash Creek uh, Bridge, um, the uh, rough ring, the northern rough wing swallows nest around there. I'm, I'm not sure exactly where they nest, but um, they're always around the bridge there in the spring and summer. Um, they're identifiable by the fact that they're brown and 
all over brown pretty much and the and breast is pretty much clean i mean there's a little tan there but um to just dis to distinguish them from a uh uh the burrowing owl the not the burrowing owl the the other uh swallow the the other brown swallow that nests up in you mean, bank, you mean a bank swallow the bank swallow thanks yeah the bank swallow has a a breast band, a brown breast band. Next slide. Another bush tit in, in a nest there. I took this photo when we were doing a, a walk out on Millville Plains. We found a nest and I caught the female coming out there. Next slide. One of the only places I know to find rock wrens is out there, uh, Millville Plains, because there's a lot of rock walls out there miles and miles and miles of rock walls. So probably the easiest place I know to find a rock wren. Next slide. Savannah sparrow is probably the most common sparrow this time of year. They, we saw a ton of them at the uh, wastewater treatment plant today. Um, and it's the, ma the main sparrow that we see this time of year. Next slide. This is a Rufus crown sparrow. They're fairly rare. Um, this one was, I think, in Red Bluff, I think is where I saw this one. Uh, but I don't see very, very often. I don't, they're, they're fairly rare. Next slide. Yeah, feel free to comment about my, about my comments. Uh, Western Meadowlark. They, they're, you know, they, they fly in huge flocks uh, in the fall. But beautiful song. And, you know, that, and, then, and then I have my nemesis birds. One of them is when we first moved up here to Oak Run, we had, we had road runners on our property. And then after a few years, they kind of disappeared. And then there was a road runner out on Millville Plains that people used to be able to see from the road every once in a while. And so I never got to really get a good photograph of a road runner. And then I finally got this one. Next slide. Yeah, that's, that's about as good as I could do for the Roadrunner. Next slide. Okay, Anderson River Park. A lot of good birds there next because the Sacramento River goes right through there. Next slide. This is just a, a huge flock of Canadese coming in, coming in off the river to that little pond there at, at uh, Anderson River Park by the, by the uh, amphitheater there. Next slide. It's also a great place to find wood ducks. There's a little pond behind the amphitheater um, where you can always find wood ducks. This is the female. Next slide. This is the female with a, with a group of young uns. Next slide. Male wood duck. Next slide. You can see why they call these double-crested cormorants, especially during breeding season, their, their uh, crests really show up. Next slide. This was the uh, at Anderson River Park when they were, the osprey were nesting on the lights before we put up the nest box there um, on the soccer field. They'd nest on top of the lights there. And this was uh, toward the end of their nesting uh, and there was a kingbird nesting in, inside the osprey nest, which is fairly common. Those osprey nests are so huge. There's a lot, many times there are other birds nesting inside their nest. And uh, kingbirds are known to be, they don't call them kingbirds for nothing. They're known to be pretty um, tenacious. And this one was harassing this osprey. Next slide. Larry, I want to ask you, um, do you know, I mean, isn't the kingbird kind of exposing its young to predation by putting them right there with the osprey or? or well, as far as I know, uh, as far as I know, osprey uh, is something like, it's over 99% of what osprey eat is fish. 
Uh -huh. So yeah. um, actually, Tim and I were talking about this today because Osprey flew over a uh, wastewater treatment plant with uh, fish. And uh, yeah, hmm. so I, I don't think uh, that, I don't think they, because also the other bird that typically nests in os inside Osprey nests are uh, uh, house sparrows. And so I don't think they um, actually do anything at all with them. Wow. Well, all right. Um, and this is a California thrasher. Actually, the only decent photograph that I have of it. And it was actually photographed at Reading Island, uh, where I was, uh, Tim and I were just a few days ago. And, um, and I was saying, you know, hey, I've only seen a couple other thrashers. I don't know why they're so difficult for me to find, but I don't know what your folks' experiences are finding California thrashers, but uh, this was one I found on Reading Island several years ago. And the only other one I've ever seen was at Anderson River Park um, on the trail that goes out uh, where the turnaround is uh, on the south end of the park. And uh, so I mentioned to Tim, I said, yeah, this is the same place where I saw my first California thrasher. And about 10 minutes later, here, here comes one at the exact same location. Um, the other place that, we, that I've seen a California thrasher is there's one that because apparently they nest in the uh, Battle Creek uh, wildlife area in the parking lot, right around the parking lot somewhere, because we saw them carrying nesting material uh, in that parking lot there one day. Next slide. Song sparrow. Uh, this is a pretty good, uh, you know, song sparrows have a lot of different looks. This is a pretty common one. Uh, fairly dark. They got the dark spot on the belly and the white chin and sing like songbirds. Next slide. Yellow billed magpie. Uh, this is, I think, the only true um, California endemic species. They only live in California, and um, they had a real big problem with, uh, with the virus uh, several years ago, but they're coming back, and there's, you can find a lot of these at Turtle Bay. Next slide. Mary Lake, I haven't been there in a really long time. Um, next slide. Did you move the next slide? Is it not moving? Are you stuck, Rebecca? Uh-oh, did Rebecca freeze? She's on mute. Rebecca, she's not moving though. I see her picture, I see her face, but she's not moving. I see Shelly. Uh-oh, I think we lost. Rebecca, oh, Re Rebecca moved. You're muted, Rebecca. Rebecca's moving now. <laughs> did you lose your, uh, did you lose your computer? See, I need to go. Oh, I can't. Ooh. Rebecca, you had to start all over, huh? Larry, well, well, Rebecca's trying to get. Uh... Yeah. I can't, we lost you, Dan. I can't hear you. Be cool. And you walk in the Yana Trail and go past the, that open field where you just have this expansive view. And if it's clear, you can see 
laughs and way in the distance and it's beautiful. And, uh, and, and then that you get to, to a spot, maybe I'm going to say half, two thirds of a mile in and the trail starts going up a hill and down. You're, I don't know if, it, if everybody else can hear you, but you're going in and out. Okay. You're going in and out, Dan. So. And I'm uh, back. I, I, my connection dropped, but I'm back now. Okay. You are. I'll, I'll wrap up, but you can also usually see um, uh, Lewis's woodpeckers on, on the way. So, so we missed the first part of what you, what you said. Where is that? The Yana Trail, which is um, just Google it, but it's, it's south of uh, Battle Creek Wildlife Refuge. Oh, um, you, oh, yeah. How do you spell it? Y-A-N-A. -A. Yeah, I've never been there, actually. Oh, you want to go there. But you want to go there uh, spring, just uh, this time of year. It can get kind of weedy. Um, you can start but, the uh, slideshow, Rebecca. All right. Or scare, share your screen. We can't hear you. Yeah, I'm having problems with um, with Zoom. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Zoom for some reason is um, getting stuck on me but here let's see from the current slide can you see that i see you did you oh. share your did you share your screen yes uh-oh oh, uh, so you can so you can see the slideshow on your screen yes and i did do a, a share screen and now i can't go Okay, there, let me try again. Um, yeah, I, multiple participants can share. Oh, maybe uh, I, I have to make you the host. Yeah, because I can't share it. How about now? Should be able to share now. Can you see it? Yeah. Okay. So you can go directly to slide. Um, and I'm going to hurry these slides up because it's getting long and some of the best images are at the end. Go to 195. Oh, yeah, there you go. That's good. So I'm going to go faster through these, you guys, because it's already 830. And um, I'm just going to kind of click through them. What do you think? Probably a good idea. Uh, so this is the, the, uh, the great blue heron who was... Uh, He's a juvenile and he's trying to fish and he, he never did catch anything. Next slide. Yeah, he, he looks a little irritated because he couldn't catch anything. Next slide. It's the female um, red-winged blackbird. Next slide. Male red-winged blackbird. Next slide. Brewer's blackbird male. Next slide, green heron. So um, the story with the green heron is this guy called me up because I'm the webmaster and he said, I think I have, I, have, I have bitterns nesting in the tree behind my house. And I said, well, probably not bitterns because bitterns don't nest in trees, but um, I'd be happy to come over and look and you know see what it is. And it was a, a green heron nesting in his tree. Uh, next slide. So I got several uh, images. He said, yeah, you can come by and, and photograph them anytime you want. Next slide. So that you can see that's the, uh, the female in the nest and then you can see the eyes of the chicks underneath there. Next slide. They're, uh, they're very violent um, feeding their young. So the, the, the adults go out and they, uh, they swallow the, 
the fish or whatever they get, and then they regurgitate it to the young. Well, when they come back to the nest, and this one had, I think, four chicks. This is how it starts. The chicks start grabbing the beak. Next slide. And then they all get into the act. And she's just, she's not opening her beak yet. Next slide. And so, she, you know, she's almost being attacked here. And finally, they, she, you know, they attack her enough that she opens her beak. And I guess, I guess the one with the strongest uh, uh, hold on her gets the food. Oh. Next, next slide. Killdeer. We saw a lot of killdeer today. Next slide. These are some uh, some fledgling uh, black phoebes. Note note the uh, the beaks. The gape in the beak is still orange. Next slide. I don't know why I have another kingbird in here. Next slide. National Wildlife Refuges. This, these are the best places to go for birds. Next slide. These are a pair of tree swallows. Uh, they come through real early in the spring at the National Wildlife Refuges. Like this is, I think, in February. Might even be January. Next slide. Lincoln sparrow. Next slide. Marsh wren. A lot of marsh wrens at the wildlife refuge. Next slide. They nest there. Singing marsh wren. They sing a lot. Next slide. These are tundra swans. This is up at uh, Klamath National Wildlife Refuge. Next slide. Greater white-fronted goose coming in for a landing. Next slide. It's a group of greater white-fronted geese. Next slide. A flock of snow and Ross's geese. They often flock together. Um, and a lot of times when they're flocking like this, you can tell them apart because the Rosses are quite a bit smaller than the than the uh, snow geese. Next slide. Yeah, there's thousands and thousands and thousands of white skeet there in the winter time. Next slide. Snow goose, typical. They have the black smile. That's one reason. You, one way you can tell them from a Ross's goose. They don't have that black smile. Next slide. This is the blue morph of the uh, snow goose. Next slide. Another shot of the blue morph with the wings open. <clears throat> Next slide. And the Ross's goose, see it's got a much smaller beak and uh, the carnubles, the, the brown stuff around their beak um, differentiates them from the snow goose also. They don't have the black smile like the snow goose. Next slide. They also come in a blue morph. This is the blue morph Ross's goose. They're pretty rare, uh, but they come through. If you go enough times, you'll eventually see one. Next slide. See, so it's a pair of gadwall in flight. Um, you can see the markings on the wings there. Next slide. Pair of American widgeon. Note how, look at how much smaller the female is. Next slide. This is a pair of Eurasian widgeons, which are much more rare. We, whenever we see a lot of, uh, we see a lot of American widgeon, we look for the Eurasian. Uh, it's e they're easy to spot the drake with that red head. Next slide. And this is a comparison between the dra the two drakes, the Eurasian in front and the American behind. Next slide. American widgeon in flight, they have those big white wing patches. Next slide, blue wing teal, probably the rarest of the teals. They're seen in fewer places than the, than the cinnamon and the green wing. Next slide, just the female blue wing teal. How do you tell the female ducks Species. I was told by I was told by a friend that you see which male they're hanging out with because they all look alike. Next slide. Cinnamon teal drake, and next slide is a close up of the drake cinnamon teal. Next slide. 
is a pair nesting. This is this is right off the auto tour in, uh, at um, the National at Sacramento National Wildlife Ref Refuge. Next slide. As the green wing green winged teal drake. It's uh, North America's smallest dabbling duck. It's, it's uh, preening there. You can see those colors. Next slide. A pair of northern pintails, drake on the left, female on the right. Next slide. Northern shovelers, the drake uh, with the color and the female. There, the, so northern shovelers are pretty easy to identify because of their shovel bill, their huge bill right. that they. What's that? Oh, next slide. This is a ruddy duck drake. Oh, it's the blue bill in blooming. This is uh, in blooming breeding plumage. Next slide is the female ready duck. You have that stiff tail that sticks up. That's one really easy way to identify the ready duck. Next slide. This is the famous falcated duck that was uh, at Calusa for several years, come back year after year after year. Um, I think for five or six years that they, they came through. This was the first year I went down there and photographed it. Um, next slide. American <laughs> coot. Next slide. American coot's feet. Love those feet. Next slide. This is a long bill curlew. We see them uh, usually in the summer here at the at the refuge. Next slide. I believe these are long-billed dowagers, and I think I photographed these over on the coast at Humboldt National Wildlife Refuge. Next slide, ring-neck pheasant. There's quite a few of these at Sacramento Wildlife Refuge. Next slide. This is a juvenile black-crowned night heron. Uh, and you can tell by the color of the beak that it's not a yellow brown, yellow crown night heron, and the color of the eyes. Next slide. So Calusa National Wildlife Refuge has a, a huge uh, uh, black crown night heron rookery there, and it's right it's right by the bridge there. You can see like tens of tens of them, tens fifties of them. Next slide. Headshot of the black crown night heron with that red eye. Next shot. American bittern. It took me years and years and years to get this photograph. I don't know why, because I never hardly see American bitterns. And if I do, they're hiding somewhere and they just take off by the time I get to them and point my camera at them. Next slide. Black neck stilts. And those are. Uh, greater white fronted geese legs behind them there. Next slide. This is a, uh, a pair of uh, black neck stilts that I believe are trying to uh, get their juvenile out of the house because uh, they were actually, you know, pretty much fighting with them. And finally that the youngster took off. Next slide. American Avocet in breeding plumage. Next slide. White-faced Ibis. Uh, they can be found almost always in the winter at, at Calusa National Wildlife Refuge. Next slide. Uh, this is a great egret, a snowy egret, and a cattle egret. Um, all in one shot. And the black uh, birds around are white-faced Ibis in non-breeding plumage. Next slide. This is a snow egret fishing. There's all, at the, at the ter, big turn at the end of Sacramento National Wildlife Refuge where it turns left and goes back towards the refuge uh, headquarters, there's a dam there and, they, and a, there's almost always a snowy egret fishing there if you, uh, if you need to add that to your list when you're at the refuge. Next slide. Great egret with some kind of a crustacean. No idea what that is, but 
I thought it was a cool picture with the eyes showing through the, the weeds there. Next, uh, next uh, slide. Cattle egrets. Uh, I don't know where it's easy to find cattle egrets, but these were all at Calusa one year in the winter, along with tons of other shorebirds and wading birds. And next slide. So the sandhill, the sandhill crane is. It was also at Calusa National Wildlife Refuge. Larry, uh, when you go, when you go, go to the refuge. Do you know, have you already looked at what's online that's, that's showing up there? Like, do you know what you're go looking for when you go down there? Um, not normally, because usually I don't go to, to those refuges until winter time when the ducks come in. And so, and what I do, what I do first is I call the refuge first to find out if they have their impoundments filled up with water yet. So usually the best time to come is December, January, like that, because it takes, they start filling up their impoundments, I think in September, October or something, and, and the, they're not all full of water until much later, like December, January. So that's when I usually go. Sometimes I'll check to see what they have down there, but you know they usually have the best, Sacramento National Wildlife and Calusa both have the, usually the best uh, choices of birds to see. Um, next, you. yeah, next slide. <clears throat> Loggerhead shrike, these seem to be few and far between for me, um, and they only occur in North America, strangely enough, but you can identify them by the hooked bill and um, a couple, they have a, their, the band across their eye, I think, is slightly narrower than uh, the other shrike. The northern strike. Next slide. Uh, northern Harrier, what, that I like to still call a marsh hawk. Uh, this is most likely a female because it looks like an adult. It was flying by my uh, blind when I took a photo. Next, next. Um, and this is the female Northern Harrier with some kind of rodent. It looks like a vole to me, but that's their main food. Next slide. Juvenile red tail hawk. You can tell it's a juvenile again by the light colored gape under the eye there and the uh, eye being yellow because uh, adult. Next slide. The adult red tail hawk has a darker eye, usually even darker than this red tail hawk. And the V, the white V on the back is, uh, is diagnostic for red tail also. Next slide. This was a red-tailed hawk coming at me. Next slide. Cooper's hawk. I have a lot of people online were talking about, hey, how do you tell a Cooper's hawk from a sharp-shinned hawk? And you know, there's several different ways. Cooper's hawk has a square tail. I mean, a rounded tail and the Sharpie has a square tail. Sharpie has thinner legs. So, and one guy said, well, the Cooper's hawk has like a mean looking face. They, they look like they're mean. But a sharp shin has a bigger head and bigger eyes. And so sharp shin head looks like they're surprised. So they, that was the way they tell them apart. And then and when I started looking at that, yeah, I did notice that the, the Cooper Hawks look like they're kind of mad and the uh, Sharpie looks like they're surprised. Next slide. I have a series of uh, red shouldered Hawks here. Um, next slide. Some headshots of a juvenile. Next slide. I like to get shots of raptors looking at me. Next shot. You just you can see this one's barely get just barely getting the red shoulders. Next. And this is all the same juvenile I took while he was. Looks like he's just eaten since he's got blood still on his beak. Next slide. And this is this is the adult. You can see it's a full uh, red belly with some some cross stripes and uh, easily see easily uh, uh, you can easily tell the species from from pretty good distance because it's the only hawk 
that had this black and white pattern on the back, like black on the back and the wings. Next slide. This is another shot of a uh, dark uh, rough-legged hawk. Next slide. This is, I think, a two-year-old um, bald eagle that was just, just flew away, was just flying away from me. Next slide. I think we got about another 20 slides to go. This is a uh, um, leucistic bald eagle that is famous for uh, at the um, up in uh, Klamath, their yearly uh, Klamath uh, bird festival. This hawk showed up every year for four or five years, I guess. And People usually chase it down, find out where it is, and then they tell everybody where it is so everybody can get photographs mm -hmm. of it. Next slide. So I got a shot of it taken off here. Next slide. Peregrine falcon. Um, there's several of these at uh, Sacramento National Wildlife Refuge. You can usually see them right on the auto tour toward the end of the auto tour loop. And um, and they'll, they'll sit there and pose for you because they pretty much ignore people because they are superior to us. <laughs> Next slide. So are squirrels. To... Huh? <laughs> so are squirrels, if you so haven't squ noticed. <laughs> <laughs> uh, did you go to the next slide? Are you stuck? Uh-oh, okay. Lassen Park, I think this is the last, the last hurrah here. Wow, I'm, I'm trying to go fast. I'll know not to put so many slides in the slideshow again. Next slide, sorry. Stellar's J, next. This is a Clark's Nutcracker and it's a juvenile. You can see once again, the gape is still, still, still pink there. He doesn't have a, if they're a full, full blown bird, they don't have a gape like that usually. Next slide. Common raven. You can tell easily from a crow by that huge bill and the hair on the, the craw there underneath the chin is all that, all that feathers there. Next slide. And we finally get to a Cassin's finch. This, this, this is why these are obviously different than the purple finch and the house finch. They've got no stripes at all on the belly, really, really, really bright uh, crown, the male does. And the female, next slide, has these really thin, thin stripes on the belly and the white uh, over the eye. Next slide. Green-tailed towhee. Um, these seem to be really hard for me to find. Other people can find them up in Lassen and other high elevations. This was uh, shot in Oregon, actually, at a festival. In Ashland. Next slide. Male Western Tanager. You can see these migrating now here in the area. Next slide. Uh, my favorite shot of a tree swallow because I like the background. Next slide. My favorite shot of a pygmy nut hatch because I've only found a pygmy nut hatch once and I took, I found out where it was nesting and I took a lot of photos. Next slide. One of my favorite birds, brown creeper, that you hardly ever seen perched. Next slide. But I saw this guy perched, and so I took photos, and I still haven't found too many other people that have seen brown creepers perched. Next slide. Mountain chickadees. These guys are all over Lassen Park. Uh, next slide. This is one that at a nesting cavity <clears throat> in an old dead snag. Next slide. Once again, my favorite duck, uh, the buffle head with its chicks. Next slide. The buffle heads are cavity nesters also. I think I mentioned this earlier and they nest up way up in trees. This guy's like 30 feet up. I mean, this girl is about 30 feet up uh, checking for nesting cavities for the next following season because she's already, her uh, chicks are already gone. Next slide. A fledgling American coot. I love coots. Next slide. This is another American coot with a chick that's a little bit older. Next slide. <clears throat> it's uh, two uh, coot chicks that were fighting over whatever that is it has in its beak. 
Next slide. Uh, you've probably seen coots taken off. They have to take a long running leap to take to get out of the water. They probably paddle 20, hit the water 20 times before they get in the air. Next slide. <clears throat> the rare blackback woodpecker. Um, the only place I know to find these for sure is in Lassen Park. They hang out in old uh, burn areas and um, that's where you need to go look. Next slide. White-headed woodpecker. <clears throat> this is the male with the red on the back. The females have all white head. Next slide. <clears throat> this is uh, the uh, female feeding the young in the nest cavity, right, right off of the trail there around Manzanita Lake. <clears throat> Next slide. A lot of people don't recognize this bird. Um, some people think it's some weird kind of flicker. This is actually a female Wilson sapsucker. Uh, next slide. And the male <clears throat> looks like this, so they're totally different. Um, the male's got lots of bright color on it with the red throat and the yellow belly. Next slide, my nemesis bird, the pileated woodpecker. This is the only photograph I have of a pileated woodpecker, even though I've seen lots and lots of them. I have not had any decent photos. Next slide. <clears throat> this is a photo of a nest of an American dipper. These are the dipper nestlings um, wow. at King's, at, uh, at, at uh, Lassen National Park. Next slide. <clears throat> That's uh, the dipper collecting food for the chicks. Next slide. The dipper feeding the chicks. This is right at uh, King's, what's the name of that place? King's Creek. King's Creek, yeah. This is right below, this is right, right below the highway, right by the steps going down to the side by King's Creek a few yeah, years that back. Crispy Creek, King's Creek. <laughs> Next it's slide. Actually not not funny, but it's true. It's what? It's it's true, but it's not funny. <clears throat> oh oh is it, oh did it burn through there? Totally. Oh geez. Next slide. <clears throat> is this a close up of the dipper feeding the chicks? Next slide. <clears throat> I believe this is a golden mantled ground squirrel. I got some, these are the last few photos. I got some uh, other than bird photos. Next slide. <clears throat> these are all from Lassen Park. This is a pika, American pika. Next slide. And these are all taken up at, um, at uh, Bumpus Hell. <clears throat> this is a, 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 mar a marmot. Next slide. A pair of purple martins. These were in Bernie, um, uh, in a, nesting in a snag there. It's really hard to find um, purple martins. There's, I guess, a lot of them around um, Lake Shasta, but um, hard to find a nesting cavity. Next slide. A pair of trumpeter swans that were uh, down in Chico wastewater treatment plant. Next slide. A pair of snowy, snowy plovers. These were over on the coast, um, north of Eureka at the, the beaches there, one of the places they nest. Next slide, great gray owl. <clears throat> this was uh, on a tour from the uh, mountain, first mountain bird festival up in Ashland. Next slide, northern spotted owl. Uh, this was, uh, I saw at Godwood days uh, in the, at, a, at a lumber area near Arcata. Next slide, Northern Goshawk. Uh, this was also um, at the Mountain Bird Festival in Ashland. So this is a, uh, a kept bird. Next slide, this is the same, sh same bird showing where it's Jesse's and the, the lure that they use to, uh, to fly them. Couple more here, last couple slides, next one. My favorite owl, 
This is a juvenile burrowing owl. And last but not least, next slide, the burrowing owl family. And that where was that it. taken? That was taken at where the burrowing owls used to have a huge several nesting locations, and that was at um, Wild Horse Golf Club in Davis. But mm -hmm. I think most, if not all of the burrowing owls have left there now and are living in the surrounding um, areas of that in Davis. I don't know why they left there, but um, I haven't been back there in a long time because I was told they started there with artificial burrows and then um, they started burrowing in natural cavities there around the golf course. So, and the golf course people loved it, you know, they, but so I don't know what happened there. Well, I'm sorry that that was, I didn't realize how long that was going to take to go through all those slides, but uh, <laughs> it was I hope great. You, yeah, thank you. Well, thank you Thanks, for Larry. Uh, that was very informative. Great thank photos. You. Thank you very much. Um, I imagine that there probably was not uh, was not uh, fully. Um, usually, all these all these presentations we do are put on our YouTube channel. But my guess is that when the uh, show was interrupted, that it probably ended the. Uh, the, the um, recording of it, so. It says it's still recording. Oh, so maybe it started recording when you came back on automatically. That'd be cool. I can always edit it. Yeah, because it's, it shows recording right now. Oh, so, oh yeah, so now I have, I'm gonna stop recording.